welcome back to the glue box and today I'm doing a video log and today what we're going to be doing is lasering I'm going to show you around my Trotec Rayjet 50 I'm going to talk a little bit about what that is how it works setting it up I'm then going to show you the software I use putting a file from the computer to the laser and then lasering. So yeah, hopefully you find it informative. Hopefully you find it a little bit entertaining and let's get on with it. So let's show you the Trotec Rayjet 50, which is a just plug and play. And it literally is a plug and play laser. It's amazing. So if I just uh, show you around now, sorry about the dodgy camera work. So this is Rayjet 50. It is fairly compact. So the bed size here is 457mm by 305 This is a protective case, so you can directly look at the laser lens without hurting your eyes. If I lift it up, you have got a couple of features. You've got your honeycomb bed which is when you're sort of cutting um, and then you can lift this out like so just pop that on the side and then you have another bed which can be used for engraving along the side you've got some useful uh, measuring rulers this is your focus helps you focus your laser so it literally just hangs there and then you can move your laser up and down inside this rail here is where the laser runs along and around about here it hits a mirror and fires the laser down into the work this side panel comes off because roughly here and here there's another lens uh, another two mirrors sorry and they help, I apologise about the autos, autofocus, that is going nuts. Okay, I'll stand back a bit. So yeah, here and here there is two mirrors, which from here the laser goes ping, 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 or ping, somewhere along there, goes along there. I need to stop putting my hand in a way. Um, that's the metal tube at the back with the fan. If I turn it on, you will hear how quiet it is. So that noise at the beginning is the pump starting for the air assist. And that's the sound you pretty much get. Not too loud at all. Also, you must always have a fire blanket and an extinguisher because if it goes up in flames, if you're not paying attention, then you want to put it out as quickly as possible. That in the corner is not bog roll. Um, but anyway, down here we've also got the extraction which goes straight out of the shed. We've got an Axminster extractor here, sorry about the mess. Um, when I turn that on, it's a little bit louder. This is the noise. Just dropped my mic. This vlogging is not going very well. So yeah, this is the sound it makes when you've got it running. And then once you've finished cutting, just knock it off. My pen for my laptop. Um, and then you can turn it off again. So what else? Um, this lid always has to be down when lasering. It won't let. It won't turn on. The laser won't start firing if you've got that lid up. It's a fail safe. And literally, the only maintenance you need to do is once a week. You need to be really careful with these they can snap off is make sure that your mirrors are clear so as you can see this is the mirror just here 
or the lens shall I say, with the mirror at the top. This will slide all the way along. There's no dust in here, there's no bits of debris. And that is literally it. And then I would say once a month maintenance would be getting this side panel off, which again is really easy. Just checking those mirrors um, and making sure there's no dust. So what I'm gonna do is just turn it on again and then watch what it automatically does. And notice it didn't do it because I had the lid up. So it's turning on. That's the air assist firing. Again, apologies about the autofocus. See the bed is now lowering. Couple of beeps. In a second. There we go. So that is it ready? You then get your honeycomb. So that's all in. Now you can get your material and I'm just using a bit of scrap 5mm acrylic. Pop that into the corner here. Get your focus tool. Da -da -da. So yeah, a couple of buttons and then press the up button and as you can see the bed is now raising and once the material hits the focus tool that is the laser focused easy peasy so that is essentially the laser ready to go so next up is showing you how I use Adobe Illustrator so I'll show you how I use that and really how simple it is to send some artwork or your design to your laser and then start cutting literally once you've done your design it may take you five minutes to do something mildly complex something really simple a minute really great really good investment for any workshop and especially where personalization is really important these days it's it's something that people want and if you can offer that then this is definitely an investment um, so yeah let's get on let's have a look at the artboards now I'm going to show you how I make my coasters so today I need to make four slate coasters with a laser engraved Westie so I've loaded that into Illustrator now and what I need to do is just select all of these all the paths make sure they're all selected go to object and they are all grouped which is good so go to file new and if you haven't got your artboard set up previously what you need to do is you can do that in this section here where it says width and height I like to work in millimetres, so this is the artboard I need. When using the laser, you need to make sure you have RGB colour and the raster effect is 300 ppi. Then you create like so. So now if I go back to the Westie, just select that copy, which is Control and C on Windows, and then paste. So now I've got my Westy on the slate but what I need to do now is kind of change the size a little bit so over here next to transform I can make this a little bit bigger so let's see what doing this at 85 does that stretches it out a little bit Let's undo that, take the constraint, put the constraint back on. Now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because the slate around the edges around here is obviously chipped as it should be. So if we make this 55, we might have a bit, there we go. Let's make this, let's see what turning this to 100 does no okay 
So we're happy that's central. We are happy that we have the logo in its right place. Now, when you send a file to the Rayjet, you need to put a border around your artwork. And this is for the positioning. So, as you can see, I've got my black rectangle, and we're going to change that to no fill. And then we're going to change in swatches to RGB green. I'm going to change the stroke to 0 0.001. And now we've got our box positioned around the artboard, which is the size of the coaster. And this is the easy part. So now it is literally like sending your work to a printer. So control P, printer, we want to change to rayjet. We want it to ignore the artboard. And then we go to setup, make sure it's showing as selecting the rayjet. Go to preferences, change the artboard size to what you have it set as and then materials. So we're working on stone and here default settings. Now you can adjust these as you go. Um, this is going to be black and white. Then select print and print again. And what will happen is the Rayjet Manager, which is the software that the Trotec Rayjet uses will open up. And then boom. And we want unentitled or actually Westy, don't we? Let's see, where's Westy? So I've got too much in here at the moment. Let's make this box a bit bigger. Westy final. Bring that in, and then put that in the corner. So now, all I need to do is go back to the laser, turn the laser on, and then connect. Laser connected. Now I'm just going to take you through um, laser engraving a slate coaster with the actual laser. So I've raised the bed, I've got the slate in its place, I've used the focus tool to make sure that's all set up correctly and all I've got to do now is close this and then I literally just press play. So now it's going to start engraving. So whilst it does that, on here as well, what it does tell you is how long it's going to take. So one coaster, this is going to take three minutes, mainly due to how complicated it is. Um, and essentially that's it. Okay, so lasering is done. It's coming to the end of my day. It's taken me a little bit longer than I was hoping because this file I bought from Etsy, it was perfect. I was trying to do a geometric dog or a Westie. They're too complicated because of all the fur and the beard. So the customer and I, we went along with the that they found online. So I bought that and we lasered it, or I lasered it. And I'll show you what it looked like. I'll just flip you around. Where's the sides? Where are its eyes? So, yeah, it didn't look very good. What I had to do was just play about within Adobe Illustrator and just try and make those eyes a little bit better. So, that leads me on to this one. 
so you can see the eyes a lot clearer and the customer was happy so I've now made four of these and I always like to test on the actual material because if I put that on scrap wood that may have looked really good however I would have then set up all four coasters and just lasered away but it would have been an expensive waste so I do like to just cover the cost of if I'm doing a set of four then I will do have an extra coaster just so I can laser on and I'll also laser on to the back so it gets two uses out of it so these coasters are 100 mil by 100 mil I'm not sure if I've said that already it's been a long day um, I buy slate that's already lacquered and the reason why I do that is because I really like the contrast look at that that looks incredible if you buy the slate laser it and then lacquer this just dulls and I don't think you get as much as a contrast so another customer asked for some oak maker discs um, these generally go into like your work pieces sort of like a signature so this is oak on 4mm MDF so it's oak veneer um, and they've also asked me for these and I think they look pretty good I'm really happy with them so essentially that's sort of my days with lasering um, it's a lot of design it's a lot of um, using Adobe Illustrator or with Trotec you can also use Coral Draw um, but I prefer Illustrator because it's all I know and I paid into it so Coral is also fairly expensive um, yeah lots of designing lots of tweaking lots of trial and error but the joy that you get out of seeing a finished product for me is is second to none um, and I can do it alongside my woodworking this is kind of taken over at the moment but I can use it with my woodworking anyway that's all from me for today hope you enjoyed vlog one don't forget to like subscribe and comment um, any questions I'll happily give you my view I'm not a lasering expert this I'm doing it in my shed at the end of my garden um, so yeah please don't think I'm an expert because uh, I'm not I'm just learning as I go and hopefully you got something from it anyway everyone take care thanks for watching